Hello, I'm Rosemary Nichols McGee from Nichols Garden Nursery in Albany, Oregon. I'm also co-author of McGee and Stuckey's The Bountiful Container, a complete guide to growing vegetables, herbs, flow edible flowers, and fruits in containers. So I did a lot of research as we were doing this about what, and I discovered the tarragon is one herb that performs better for me in a container than it does in the ground. Our soils are cold in the winter and the tarragon struggles to emerge in the container. It just does super, super well. This is the same plant that we were looking at a little bit ago that was all dried out. Just looked really a sorry state after we'd been on vacation. We're two and a half weeks out from when that was shot. So take a look at all this lovely, lovely growth. Every bit of it is edible. Now, French tarragon is what you want to use. And when you go, when you buy from us, you'll see that we never sell tarragon seed. We only sell the plants. And if you go to a store and you see a plant, don't be afraid to take a little piece off of it. Take a bite. And go for that anise strong flavor. And if it doesn't have a taste, leave it there. And if it's good, well, then you should buy it, of course. But we never object to someone tasting it. So, how do you use tarragon? I use it, I stuff branches like this inside the chicken, under the chicken breast skin. I mix it with cheese. I use it for vinegar. I use it in salads. Um, I'll take a bunch of leaves. Take a piece like this. And you just go backwards on it and start stripping from the skin. And see how easy that was? And then you'll chop this up and add it to a salad. It's really quite nice if you say take some cottage cheese and some mild onion, green onions and a little bit of this and maybe a little diced in there. Nice, quick, easy, high protein salad. Um, these can also be stuffed into a jar and pour hot, boiling, white wine vinegar over that. And you will have an essence of vinegar that you can use in sauces in any cooking. Very, very easy to work with. Also nice and omelets. Now, tarragon is actually a very vigorous plant. And one of the things that you have to do with this is well, this is turning out harder than I had expected. But we are going to look at this and see whether or not this is almost on the verge of being what we call wet down. We're starting to get some circular movement in here and in here. And I probably, this is fall when we're photographing this, and I hold back until spring when the plant's growing vigorously. And at that point, I'm going to cut this into three pieces and trim some of this off and replant because plants to flourish need the chance to regrow. Another advantage to using a rather small container like this is that in late December, early January, you can bring this inside, you can pop it on the windowsill in front of the sun, and these will just fill up with shoots a very savory fresh tasting tarragon just when your palate is wanting to taste something fresh and green and delicious. So tarragon's a heavy feeder and so I would advise that you feed it with fish fertil emulsion fertilizer, uh, liquid kelp or whatever your favorite fertilizer is and make sure that it gets one or two fertilizers every season. Uh, that about wraps it up for tarragon but always buy the French tarragon. It's Artemisia dracunculus, and oddly enough, this Russian tarragon seed that is often offered for sale is also called Artemisia dracunculus, and people will argue and tell you it's just the same. Give it time. Don't believe it. Um, so Nichols Garden Nursery is uh, located at just a step off I-5 in Albany, Oregon. Come visit us. Hello, I'm Rosemary Nichols-McGee from Nichols Garden Nursery in Albany, Oregon. 
And today we're going to finish talking about tarragon. Tarragon, this is December in Oregon. We've had a couple good hard freezes and this planter was outside. We brought it indoors and I want to show you today about forcing tarragon in winter. And we're going to do a little close up here now. All right, now this tarragon came in and we had lots of nice big leaves on it, but they were looking dried out and kind of uninviting. The freeze cuts them back. This is what you see out there after the frost. So we bring this indoors. That's actually very hard to cut. And here are all these little shoots that are coming up now. The plant is invigorated by the chilling period and then the old growth dies back and the new growth comes. Also, this plant's been in this container. I love growing tarragon in containers, but okay, now watch here. We're going to turn this over and we're going to see what the, what's going on down below. It's always a good idea with your plants. And as you can see, this plant is becoming somewhat root bound and this is a one of the biggest problems that we can have with tarragon. Take a look at this. Look at those vigorous roots there. It's almost indestructible if it has good drainage. This is the biggest requirement for tarragon and it's actually a pretty heavy feeder. I've been trimming this stuff off for days and I keep seeing more and more of it so don't worry about it. What I'm going to do now is just take this little bread knife, cut this up into four sections I have, I want to get this divided. I like to keep it growing in the winter, indoors. Those fresh pieces of tarragon are so savory and add great flavor to your salads, to your chicken, to fish, poultry. And my friend Marcy Hawthorne, who does our catalog covers, is, um, said that gophers have eaten all of her tarragon. So I want to send a piece of tarragon to her. So I need to divvy this up and send her a nice plant. Now take a look here. There's not that much showing on that one, but as I was cutting this, I saw one. There, there's a good example. You can see the little shoots coming up from down below and they are really vigorous. And this piece goes to Marcy. I'm going to need a little more potting soil in there, but this is what we do. We just fertilize this, put a little fertilizer on, fertilizer in here, a little more potting soil, and let it grow. And from now through February, March, keep it indoors, keep it on in just a little bit of light, and use it. And I just, you know, a little shoot like this is just right for the plucking. And as I mentioned before, I always in my gardening talk say, take a little taste and get that little bright sizzle on the tongue. You know it's real tarragon, not seed grown Russian tarragon. This always must be propagated by cuttings or division. But one of the loveliest herbs and one of the basis of French cuisine.